Is that a mistake? Not a, American public clearly has no appetite to get involved militarily in another Middle Eastern country after mm -hmm. Iraq and Afghanistan. So is it a mistake for the president to be saying what he's saying? It's one of so many mistakes that we've made on this conflict. Uh, the conflict has been going on just over two years. And all of the worst things that we know now, we knew two years ago. We knew Bashar al-Assad was killing his own citizens. We knew he had chemical weapons. We knew he had proxies in Hezbollah and Iran and Russia. Dangerous people in a dangerous part of the world. And we knew that al-Qaeda and al-Nusra and ISIS and other jihadist fronts were going to capitalize on this con conflict, on the chaos. They've done all of that. And the problem is that Obama's pleased no one. If you wanted military intervention, if you wanted uh, us to go in, he clearly hasn't provided that. If you wanted us to stay out, well, too bad. He's drawn red lines. He's called for the ouster of Assad. He's allowed Russia to broker a deal where they take the chemical weapons. We are both in and out, and our inaction and confusion has made this a more dangerous conflict. And, and you know, a lot of the U.S. allies, in the, whether the Saudis or the Emirates, other countries, they're very worried about U.S. strategy in the Middle East right now because, and I've spoken privately with a lot of these leaders, they say they don't see a strategy. We don't have one. Well, well for, first of all, let's be clear that it's a good thing that the president is ruling out military intervention right now because there's a big question. How much would it cost? Who would pay for it? How long would we, we be there? And whose kids are going to go over there to fight that? So I think it's important that we're exhausting all diplomatic means, all non-military means to get in there. That said, we are now in a situation where we have to have a regroup and a reset. Uh, th this uh, disaster in Geneva, uh, I think, opens a new chapter. Uh, what we are doing right now is not working. We're going to have to do something different. The difference, though, between uh, the, the liberal internationalists and some of our more hawkish friends is we don't think that we're going to be able to shoot our way out of this thing. We're going to be able to bomb our way out of this thing. We've got, to, we've got to do two things. One, we've got to double down on humanitarian aid and call Russia's bluff. If Russia wants to be this new uh, responsible world power, then stop blocking humanitarian aid and, and go hard at Russia on blocking humanitarian aid. And number two, uh, we've got to put ourselves in a position where we, we get Iran and Saudi Arabia to the table together because it's actually a proxy war between them. But, but, but drawing a red line is implicitly suggesting military intervention. Well, when you draw a red line, which we've done not once but a few times and we've, con we've continued to move it, the, Im the implication there is that we are willing to put our full military behind the weight of those words. Are, are you, look, here, here's what I would say. I would rather for us to stumble on the way to peace than to blunder into another war. Part of the problem we have right now is that we overextended ourselves the last time. And so now you have not just uh, uh, the, the president not wanting to go forward, the American people don't want to go forward with the war, and frankly, most of the Republicans, when they had a chance to vote for war in the, in the fall, so they didn't want that right. either. right. The president so, did not make the case effectively. He came out a year later to say, Here's what I'm asking you to do. He didn't tell us why. He was mixed on the strategy even. He said going in militarily would, is not calling for question. Assad's ouster. Do, do, you think, do you think we would be better off right now if we were engaged in another land war, another civil war in the Middle East? Yes or no? I think we are going to be paying for our inaction far longer than any surgical military action now. That would be ask, a tough decision, but the right thing to do. Should the U.S. provide a billion dollars to Jordan to help with these hundreds of thousands of refugees who have fled from right. Syria into Jordan, a close friend and ally of the United States? You know, someone's got to Absolutely. deal with this humanitarian crisis. Yeah. We've got at least 140,000 dead, millions of refugees. We are part of the world stage. Absolutely. I think it is our responsibility to help out in ways that we can. You agree? Absolutely. I don't know if it's going to be enough, though. <laughs> well, first of all, of course. But here's a problem. Liberals like myself criticized George W. Bush for, for rushing into war. We said he, it was an Ill, illegal war. The UN wasn't with him. It was illegitimate. The coalition was too small. And he didn't have a plan to win the peace. We can't now ask Obama to go in with no UN mandate militarily, with no coalition, and with no plan to win the war. So we have to be consistent here as Americans if, we, if what we learned from the Iraq war was that Bush's strategy was wrong. This strategy is being uh, proposed now is even Didn't worse. Didn't he go into Lib Libya illegally without well, there, Congress? I, I believe there was a United Nations uh, 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 Security Council there. resolution. Right. Okay.